Human beings are made for mystery. We are made to know why this story is happening, how it all got started, where it all went wrong, and when and where and how it's going to be brought to resolution and made right. We are made to get to the bottom of things, to grasp the true nature of reality for what it really is, to know the truth deeply, to see justice done rightly. God made you that way so that you could ultimately find Him, the mystery. And every time you're deeply drawn into a good mystery story through a book, a movie, an online game, or a great TV show like Sherlock, you are giving evidence to the fact that you are made for God. Have you seen the clues? Have you experienced the clues? He gives wisdom to the wise, prayed Daniel, and knowledge to the discerning. He, God, reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. I remember when I watched the first episode of the BBC's Sherlock, And then within a couple of weeks, binged watched every single other episode of that show. I can see the track marks still there. And so many BBC mystery shows since then, it's bad. But Sherlock was just so brilliant, right? So perceptive, so quick, a bit arrogant, but it didn't matter. He was so, so, so smart, perceptive and able to resolve things that no one else could. In that opening scene, in the open, or in that middle scene in the opening episode, when he read Watson like a book when he first met him, or how he would pick up clues that none of the other detectives would see. Her coat was wet under the collar. That means she came in on the train that day. And, and of course, the killer's got to be a taxi driver. And then later on in another episode where he was the undoing of James Moriarty, the most dangerous criminal mind in the world. I mean, what a mind Sherlock has. Almost superhuman, so well-reasoned, so aware, so awake, so alive. And for me, so, so compelling. Which makes me ask, now, could it be that I'm made to know someone who can resolve things that no one else can? Could it be that you're made to know someone who knows it all? And that's why it feels so resonant and good. Who sees it all. Who understands the mystery perfectly. And could it be that all the mysteries in our lives that we engage, all of our questions, our pains, our insatiable search for meaning and resolution, that they are meant to be resolved by someone who is this otherworldly, this great, this much above the rest, superhuman? A few weeks ago I read a New York Times obituary for the great mystery writer P.D. James. In turbulent times, she said, people turn to detective stories for reassurance as much as entertainment because they do affirm the intelligibility of the universe, the moral norm, the sanctity of life. It seems to me, she continued, that the more we live in a society in which we feel our problems, be they international problems of war and peace, racial problems, problems of drugs, problems of violence, to be literally beyond our ability to solve, the more reassuring it is to read a popular form of fiction which itself has a problem at the heart of it, one which the reader knows will be solved by the end of the book. 
As people of faith, we believe that the problem will be solved by the end of the book, right? We believe that there is an intelligibility in behind the universe, an intelligent mind made all that is, every moral norm and every sacred human being, every sacred life. And we believe with Christ that the time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. You know, the bad stuff that we are, I'm hiding in the back closet of my life, but also everything, reality as it really is and what God made you to know and to be. Could it be that every mystery that's ever intrigued your soul is meant to point to him, to his mysterious plan, to his long-promised and hope-filled conclusion? Your insatiable desire, I'm thinking my wife and her detective mysteries as I say these next three things, your insatiable desire to see the problem resolved, the urgency with which you need to get to the end, your passion to be a mystery solver like Sherlock or choose your favorite protagonist. I mean, is that, like, are you supposed to be living that kind of mystery-solving life? Is the reason we resonate with these great characters because you're supposed to be in the mystery and you're supposed to be part of the solving and the solution, getting to the answer. Could it be that instead of just vicariously living it through a great film or a book, you're actually called to step into it, the story yourself, that is really playing out and that God is telling? I found it so amazing the way John Watson was healed and transformed throughout the whole series, but especially in that opening episode of the series. PTSD, walking with a cane, more the sitting down type. And then he meets Sherlock, and Sherlock has no time for his insecurities, and he calls his bluff, and Sherlock knows who he is before he even meets him, and they've been introduced. And Sherlock ends up inspiring him to forget all of those fears and doubts and what was holding him down, inspires him to life with his passion and his wisdom and his light. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you really entered into the mystery that God is writing right now in this world, of which you're a character, of which, within which you have a calling? The other day, I read a portion of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, and I was so into Sherlock for about a day and a half just thinking about Sherlock-type stuff that I read the Bible passage, but I had the, all these images from the, from the TV show running through my head, and all the characters were kind of filling in the characters of the Bible text in this beautiful co-illumining kind of way. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 to 16 the apostle writes, we speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, like all those other detectives who couldn't get it, who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. And as I read the word God's wisdom, I just had Sherlock's face in my face and all of his superhuman capacities. And the idea he was like iconically the, the idea or the face of a bigger superhuman wisdom beyond our imagination, plans that we couldn't really understand, but somebody did. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, 
These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit and our faith. The Holy Spirit is the source of all wisdom, the illuminer, the opener of our eyes so that we can see the clues and follow the threads and tie things together so that we can know reality for what it is. A common grace given to every human being, and in a special way, we believe, as Christians, through the Spirit living in us, given in a special way. The Spirit searches all things. And then a quote from the movies, Sherlock, came to mind. You, you see, Sherlock said, but you don't observe. Even the deep things of God. And by that point in the first reading, Sherlock started to fade away, and I just started thinking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, come from God to us through Christ For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. There is a deeper plot afoot. You've maybe felt it at times in your life where all of a sudden things get a little transparent and like something bigger is going on. This mystery, this pain, it's, it's, not, it's not over yet. It's, this is going somewhere. And there is a spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God in behind reality as we know it. And some of us may know it. None of us knows it fully. But we know it in part, as though looking through a glass dimly. But there is a bigger kingdom and story being told in and through and behind and before and after your story, our stories. And you are made to see into that bigger story from what is sometimes just an ordinary story that you're living right now, that I'm living right now, But these glimpses, these pointers in church or while walking down by the river or skiing or watching Sherlock. The person without the Spirit does not accept the thing that does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. But the person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things. But such a person is, is not subject to merely human judgments for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. But we, Paul writes, have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ can probe all mysteries. And the mind of Christ, it says throughout Scripture, understands all things. Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up into glory. And we look at this Son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this Son, and we see God's original purpose in everything He created, this whole story. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything God started in Him and finds its purpose in Him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, alpha to omega, he is there, towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, 
that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. And not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, such a mystery, his blood that poured down from the cross. And even Sherlock can't hold a candle to him. A couple months ago, ooh, don't drop the mic. I ordered, where is it? One of these. What is it, Sherlock fans? It is the actual Eschenbach magnifier that Sherlock Holmes uses in the BBC series. Shows you how much of a fan I am. And as I held it the other day and was looking through it, I thought, Jesus, you are the lens through which I and we can see all reality for what it is. We can see God the Father through you. You're the perfect icon, the perfect clarifier, the perfect magnifier of who your Father is. Truths about who I am and the mystery of the story when it's upside down, especially the twists and the plot turns. And who I am belonging to you. You're the lens. By your Spirit, you show me who I am and who you're meant to be. He's, he's the mystery of God come near, speaking words, taking on flesh so that you could see. I could see. We could know. We could finally get it. Know who we are, where we stand, why we're here. And he is the mystery that you've been written into. And while it's good to enjoy God's good gifts of mysteries and storytelling and film and books and the proliferation of mystery that fills human culture, we mustn't, we can't stop there in terms of our engaging and living into mystery. Let those mysteries point you to the ultimate mystery. Let the truths and the passions and the joys and the delights that come in that place point you to the truth and the delight and the joy that is Christ. Point you to the God who ultimately is mystery. The God who I guess for the rest of eternity will be trying to get to know and never get to the end of because God is so deep and wide and his love unplumbable. The God who holds the answers for things will never be able to even know to ask the questions about who knows at all and longs to share what he knows with you, with me, with us. If you've seen the show, then you've gotten inklings of how much God wants to share what he knows with you and his love with you. It, they come up in those tender moments when Sherlock, who for the most part doesn't care about anybody but himself, it seems, or solving the crime or the game, deeply cares in a moment for John Watson or Molly or Lestrade. And if a flawed, fictional, superhuman detective can do that, then surely the God who made the universe, a perfectly loving, real God, can do that and feel that for you. This is a mystery who we can know in part and mysteriously love and be loved by and know in other places in the Bible that teach that the maker of everything cares about, like, everything in your life, down to the last hair on your head and your deepest questions and pains and desires. 
He's left clues all over your life. Can you see them? With all wisdom and understanding, God has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity, to bring together, to bring coherence to, to pull everything that is, unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. The mystery of God who would come as a baby and take on human flesh. What a disguise. The mystery that he spoke again and again through these amazing and eloquent parables. I mean, so good at getting us to see past reality to the spiritual truth and reality and behind it all, the kingdom. I mean, the mystery of a God who would die for his made, his beloved, you. Jesus Christ, the most human human being you'll ever know, God with you, mystery revealed, mystery embodied, and the best ending and beginning that you will ever know. Let's pray. Sometimes it's just good to sit, to stand uh, before you, God. Be seen. Be loved. Be whispered to, brooded over, held, convicted, loved. If you are who you said you were, say you are, Jesus, then if, if you are God with us, then help us, all of us who want this, who want you, to step into the truth of you holding all things, the one through whom everything in the cosmos was mediated, the saving of which was mediated by you and the future over which, which your kingly rule will mediate God with us for eternity. I mean, no mere Jesus storyteller, no mere myth about a death and supposed resurrection, no, no great eloquence. Of, I mean, the teaching almost falls to the side or takes a second place before this image, this picture of you, this mystery of all things, everything, come together in you. It all points to you. It's all meant to point to you. Our lives are meant to point to you. Help us, God, to incline our hearts and our minds and all of our beings and all of our work and all of our living and all of our loving and all that we are and all that you've given to you, the source of all things, the giver of all good gifts. Help us to, this year, in new ways, maybe, see you, see your face. 
walk in your kingdom's ways, those deeper spiritual realities and behind all things, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.